Hello, AGCS community. If you're wondering what a high school fiber arts teacher does while she's stuck at home during a pandemic and school is closed, you're looking at it. She gets out Susie the sewing machine and starts to make some interesting and fun protective facial masks for when she needs to go out into public. So I made this face mask using some fun sugar skull material that I had laying around the house. As you can see, I have a lot of fabric. I used my sewing machine, but I could have also used a needle and thread. But then after some thought, I was thinking, what about the families that don't have access to a sewing machine or know how to use one or really don't know how to sew or have access to a lot of fabric like I do? So what I did was I figured out a way three ways actually that you can use household items to quickly and easily make anyone a face mask. So it might just be a fun art project for your family to do, but if you're going to be doing art, why not make it fashionable and functional? So here we go. So these are some of the pieces of fabric that you could find around your house to use for the face mask. Here's a regular piece of fabric. Here's a dish towel. Here's an old pillowcase. And here's a shirt that I grew out of that I could use. You could even use a paper towel if you are so inclined. Anything that will protect your nose and face. Here's some things you can use for the ear attachments string, yarn, rubber bands, or even hair ties. What are some other things you can think of? I'm thinking of ribbon, maybe zip ties, maybe twisty ties. I don't know, get creative. The tools you're going to need are a stapler, scissors, and markers or a pen, and a piece of paper. If you find you don't have a stapler or staples at home, there are two other versions that don't use them. Instead of a ruler, you can use a standard piece of paper for measurement purposes. If you find you don't have a standard piece of paper like this, you can also use a business envelope. So if you look, a business envelope is just about two times the width of this piece of paper. It's okay if we lose a little bit of the length at the top. So I found this fun piece of tie-dyed fleece material, and if you look at my paper, we can see that I can almost fit two pieces of paper on this particular piece of fabric. So what I would do is I would just cut it in half. If I lose a little bit here or there, it's fine. Another handy piece of fabric is a bandana. So I found these bandanas, and just simply look how many we can get out of this one bandana. One, two, three, four. We can get about four masks from one bandana. So for demonstration, I'm going to use an old pillowcase that I found. And if you decide you want your mask to be double thick, you just use your pillowcase as is and do your measurements as such. If you want it to be singularly thick, then you would only use one piece of fabric. You can either trace this and cut it out completely and have two pieces of fabric, or you can cut your pillowcase all along the seams and have one giant piece of fabric and then do your tracing and cut out afterwards. For each version, you're gonna do these same steps in which you're going to trace and cut out your piece of fabric. Now that you have your rectangular piece cut, you're going to flip it upside down and we're working lengthwise. We're going to do an accordion fold in which we're gonna fold the top part down towards us, showing the right side, the correct side of the fabric. You're gonna use your finger, your pinky, as your measurement. Your pinky up to your pinky now. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull it up, fold it back again, and fold it on top of itself. This is called an accordion fold, and it takes a little bit of practice to get it even. It also depends whose pinky you're using to measure with but this is how it should look. Next, we're gonna make our first cut to make our ear attachment. So if you look at your folds, 
you will have two folds like this and it's open on the other end with one fold in the middle. We're going to be cutting up from here almost up to the top but not, not quite. Use your pen for thickness and take your scissors and just cut up almost to the top. If you're not sure when to stop, always try to use a pinky width. Now the one problem that we have here is this won't open all the way. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to open up and that bubble that's in the inside, you're going to need to cut that as well. And as you can see, we have our first ear attachment. Next we're going to use our stapler to attach the mask ends together. If you want to use glue, maybe some form of duct tape, be creative with this part. So I'm just going to take my stapler and I'm going to go into the end and I'm going to staple three staples directly next to each other to hold the ends of this mask together. After you do both sides, you have a mask that's ready to wear. You've got your ear connectors or your ear attachments, the place where you put your mouth and your nose, and here's what it's going to look on the outside. You could even get creative and draw a happy face or a mouth or lips. Version one, complete. Although it does kind of look more like a beak than anything else, I think I would have fun decorating this. Let's move on to version two. Okay, on to version two. For this version, you will not need a stapler. However, you will need either two rubber bands or two hair ties or two stretchy pieces of something. String or yarn will also work. The next step requires scissors and then ultimately a rubber band for each side for each ear. So this step you're going to be making a cut after you make a fold on the end. So if you're not real good with scissors, I would recommend getting a parent or someone who is good with scissors for this step. What you're going to do is you're going to take the end of your mask and you're going to fold it inward. Again, how thick? Pinky width or use your pen. Take your scissors and keeping your fingers far away from where the blades touch, you're just going to cut in just a little tiny bit. And what that does is that creates a hole. Through the hole that you've just created, you're going to take the rubber band and you're going to put it through the hole. You're then going to have rubber band on each side. Take one side of the rubber band and put it through the other side. Carefully pull it through the hole until it's tight. Can you see where I'm going with this? Here's your first ear connection. When you're finished, your mask will look like this. What you do is you open it up and you put it on your face. Ear connection, ear connection, simple. Here's face mask version number two with the rubber band ear connections. Get ready, here's face mask number three. For face mask version number three, we jump to the step where we have our accordion folded mask ready to go. And we can use string or yarn. How much? Well, if you take your hand and you wrap your string around your hand twice, that's a very good measurement of what you're going to need. So you're gonna need this times two. Okay, the next step involves scissors again. So again, if you're not too good with scissors, you may wanna have someone help you. What you're going to do is you're going to fold this end again, just like we did before, um, finger width, maybe a little bit more. But this time we're gonna make three even cuts. Again, be sure to keep your fingers away from the scissors. So I'm gonna make a cut, a cut, and a cut. Try to keep them equidistant, not the end of the world if you don't. Open it up and you'll have three holes. One, two, three. This step involves a little weaving. Take, take one of the strings that you cut, go up and down through the different holes that you created, and pull it through. Next, you're going to tie it off on the end. Take both ends together, wrap it around your finger, and tie it through. Now I recommend doing this loosely until you have both sides done and you can size whether you want the string to be tighter or not. So here's what your final mask looks like, the third one. 
Okay, so here's what version three looks like with the string woven through the ends. Now, with all of these things, take my instruction and run with it. Do you need three cuts? No, maybe you need two. Maybe you can use the second version instead of using rubber bands, use string with it instead. If your face is smaller, use the paper cutting technique widthwise rather than lengthwise. There's so many things you can do with this and it's fun and you can really come up with some cool designs. Maybe AGCS should have a contest to see who comes up with the coolest face protecting mask. Either way, everybody stay healthy and I hope this helped.